I don't know if you have noticed, but this month is a theme, renewal, revival, and restoration. So we're going to continue on that theme here tonight. If you could turn with me in your Bibles to Luke chapter 15, I'm going to start in verse 17. When you got it, shout amen. I'm still waiting. I got a few, I got a few people around here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I see some, some fans, fans going, in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you're not hot, you need to worship more with us. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Luke 15, verse 17, the word of the Lord reads, And when he came to himself, this is about the prodigal son, And when he came to himself, he said, How many higher servants of my father's have bread enough to spare? And I perish with hunger. Verse 18, I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. I am, am, excuse me, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. Verse 20, and he arose and came to his father. But when he was a great way afar off, his father saw him. And had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. The son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and be merry for this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. Tonight, I want to talk to you about restoration. Restoration. Come on, let's put our Bibles down, and let's pray that God would help us in this place here tonight. Come on, if you've got the Holy Ghost, why don't you lift up your voice and help me to pray. Heavenly Father, we love you tonight. We thank you tonight, Lord, for your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for your kindness. I thank you, Lord, that you've called us out of darkness into marvelous light, into your kingdom for such a time as this, Lord. I pray, Father, that you would help us, Lord God. Help me to preach your word here tonight, Lord. Help me, Lord God, to minister unto your people, Lord God, as you have directed, Lord. I pray that your will would be done in this service, Lord. Put the enemy under our feet tonight, Lord God. Give us full power, dominion, and control. Oh, God, over all power of the enemy, Lord Jesus, and help us to walk in victory, Lord Jesus, Lord. I pray that your will would be done here in this service. Save, heal, set free, deliver, and restore, oh, God. Oh, God, that we can say it was good to be in your presence, Lord God. Have your way in this service, and we'll be careful to give you the glory, to give you the honor, and to give you the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Come on, why don't you clap your hands unto the Lord one more time. Hallelujah. Why don't we praise him? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You can be seated. Praise God. Last week we dealt with revival and what a powerful ser- sermon that was. And uh, these types of sermons, I'm preaching to myself as well. You never get to escape these types of things, nor should you ever think we're anywhere above. Amen. Right. If we think we made it, we'll probably have an elder brother spirit. And we'll deal with that here in just a little bit. But revival, what we dealt with is the act of taking something that had died and bringing it back to life again. I want you to know that God specializes in revival. I'll say that again. God specializes in revival. From the moment Eve ate of that fruit, (laughs) God began the process of revival. Matter of fact, the scripture tells us that Jesus is the lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. That means before she even ate the fruit, God knew he would need to revive his people. He knew he would need to take us from a dead state 
He created us with life, but and through our disobedience, and through our arrogance, through our pride, and through our sin, we caused ourselves to die. But God revived us. The scripture says in Ephesians 2 verse 1, it says, And you hath he quickened. Somebody said, I'm quickened. <laughs> Who were dead in trespasses and sins. Where in time past you walked according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air. That's how you used to walk. Come on, somebody. The spirit that now worketh in the children of the disobedient. Praise God. That was us. Hello. Verse 3 says, among whom also we had all, we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh. That was, that was me. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. That was me. Hello. And we're, look at this, by nature, the children of wrath, even as others. That was all of us in here. Everybody in here fits up under that portion of scripture right there. We were dead in trespasses and sins. We were walking according to the course of this world. We didn't even know it, but we were under the prince of the power of the air. We, were, we didn't even know it, but we were the children of the disobedient. We fulfilled the lust of our flesh and the desires and the flesh and the mind. And by nature, our very nature was the children of wrath. But verse 4 says, but God, who is rich in mercy. Come on. For his great love wherewith he loved us. Verse 5, even when we were dead in sins. Come on. God hath quickened us together with Christ. Come on, somebody. While you were yet dead in sin, while you were children of wrath, while you were children of disobedience, while you were fulfilling the lust of your flesh, while you were doing all that your mind wanted to do, huh? while we were yet dead in sin, come on, we've been quickened together. God didn't wait it for you to get it all together before he hung on the cross for you. God didn't wait for you to get everything together before he filled you with his spirit, before he made a way for you to apply the blood of Jesus in the waters of baptism. Come on, somebody. God knew where you were, huh? and he reached down to where you were and pulled you out of the muck, pulled us out of the mire, pulled us out of darkness, pulled us out of the filth of this world and set us up on the rock of all oh, glory to God. We ought to thank God because he didn't leave us in a half dead state. We ought to thank God that he didn't leave us in that state, but our servant God that the Bible says is rich in mercy, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Every sinner that gets saved goes through revival. We were dead, hallelujah, but now we are alive again. Born again by the water and the spirit. Baptized in Jesus' name. Filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Scripture says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You have been revived, child of God. You have been brought back from death into life. You have been brought out of darkness into his marvelous light. The scripture says we were not a people, but now we are the people of God. The scripture says we have not obtained mercy, but now we have obtained mercy. The word says we were aliens to this thing, but we've been brought into the commonwealth. Come on, somebody. We were strangers. We had no covenant. We had no promise. We had no inheritance. But now God has given us his spirit and made us to sit together with Christ in heavenly places. We've got an inheritance. We're going to rule and to reign with Christ. John said, beloved, now our are we the sons of God and it doth not yet appear what we shall be but we know that when he appears we shall see him as he is uh, and be like him is anybody glad that you have been revived this morning not in my lost mind I'm in my right mind uh, I'm not drunk with old wine I've got the new wine of the Holy Ghost uh, I'm not on drugs no more I'm living clean praise God uh, I'm not in the world no more I'm in the church now uh, I know Jesus and I got a prayer life and he's inside of me uh, and I'm in him uh, if that's you you ought to make some noise in this building tonight uh, to say I'm now a child of God uh, I'm not of this world God has snatched me out of darkness uh, and brought me into this light and I'm so glad uh, that my heavenly home is already solidified. I've been sealed with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Come on. I've got the name of Jesus on my life. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on and bless him tonight. We have been revived. We were dead. But through the redemptive power of the gospel and the new birth experience, we are alive again. God can do more than just revive. God can also restore. 
And in our text today, the prodigal son experiences a revival. Yeah, he, he has a revival even in a, even in a foreign place. He, he, you, you probably heard of the story, but I'll summarize it for you very quickly. Uh, in this chapter, Luke, Luke 15, Jesus is telling multiple examples of things that were lost. Uh, the first one was a lamb or a sheep that had gone missing. He left the 99 and went and found that one. Uh, the next one was an example of a coin uh, in a house. Just lost one of them. He lit a candle in the house and found that one. And this last one is, is, is two sons, rather, that he had at home. and The elder one and the younger one. And the younger one got fed up being in the house. He went to his father and said, give me my inheritance. And the father didn't argue with him. He, the father gave him his inheritance. And the Bible says he went into a far country, away from, away from his father. Because when you, when you backslide, you go as far as you. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. It's one thing to never have known what the father's house is and then come into the house. But it's another thing to already be in the house and then backslide from it. Praise God to already know all the rules of your father's house and then leave it. Praise God. Hello, somebody. That's, that, that's a different scenario altogether. So he goes into a far country. And the Bible says he wasted his, wasted his inheritance on riotous living. He just partied it away. Amen. And I, I've definitely been through my partying phase. And, and, and I pray all of you either don't go through a partying phase. Hello, teenagers. Thank you, Jesus. Or, or if you're in it, go ahead and come out of it. Thank you, Jesus. And for the love of God, don't backslide back into it. Ain't nothing out there for you anyway. It might be fun for a little while, but eventually uh, that pleasure of sin is going to fade, and you're going to be left with you're going to be left with a whole bunch of scars. And, and in in that foreign place, as soon as a famine came, he had no money left. He had to join himself to a person of that country, and you know that the people of that country they don't they, they don't follow the same rules as the father's house, you know, because the father's a Jewish person, and the Jewish people don't deal with pigs. But in that country, uh, he had to join himself with a man that kept pigs. And, and just, just to survive. And, and the Bible says all of his friends left him. See, when, when you, you might think you have friends in the world, but, but l l let a little famine come. <laughs> let a little trouble come. <laughs> You'll find out who your friends really are. <laughs> Praise God. All of his friends left him, and, and he found himself uh, taking care of pigs, and he was so hungry he was about to eat what the pigs were eating. It was at that moment that his mind came back to him. And he utters this scripture that I read for you today. The Bible says in verse 17, Luke 15, verse 17, when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. This is what happens when he came to himself. I will arise, he said, and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. He had a revival before he had ever come back to the father. He had repentance in mind before he had ever came back. God was already dealing with him well before he even got back to the house. How many have that testimony? God was dealing with me while I was yet in the club. Dealing with me in the bed of fornication. Saying, well, you know this ain't right. This is stupid. Why am I even here? I don't even half know this person's last name. Why am I? Praise God. God dealing with you while you were yet smoking out. Hello, somebody. <laughs> Amen. A lot of people repent before they ever come to church because they come here because I know I got to find God. Uh, people come here just trying to make their way back to the Father's house. And if that's you today, I'm telling you, you're in the right place. Because in the same way that that father fell on his son, the Holy Ghost is going to fall on you. Thank you, Jesus. And he's going to embrace you, praise God, and begin to revive you. Thank you, Jesus. And begin to restore you. That's what Jesus wants. He doesn't want you to stay far away. He wants you to come back close. He doesn't want you to stay in sin. He wants you to come out of it. He doesn't want you to stay in that dark world where there's a famine. He wants you to come back home because he's got bread enough and to spare. Even the servants have more than they need in the Father's house. I'm telling you, in this season, it's time to return and come back to the Father's house to get that bread that the Father has, to get that anointing that only the Father has, to get all that God has for us. Jesus is not his will for us to stay far away from him. He wants to revive us, but he also wants to restore. Restore means to put back our rightful place with him. So I've got three quick points for you here tonight, and we're going to go quickly, but I pray that this helps you here. Uh, firstly, everything that is lost can be found. Hello, I'm going to say that again. Everything that is lost can be found. Joel chapter 2, verse 25. And I will restore to you the years 
that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you, verse 26, and you shall eat pl in plenty, and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, that he hath dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. This scripture is a prophecy concerning the state of Israel, that even though God had allowed them to go through trials, tribulations, circumstances that would consume them, God would eventually restore unto them everything that they had lost. Every bit of time that was given over to the enemy and consumed, God promised it would be restored. Everything that was taken from you, God is able to restore it. Everything that you think you've left or you made a mistake and you think is gone, God is able to restore it. Let me tell you something there is no family member that is lost that God can't save doesn't exist God is able to restore it there is no position in him that is lost that God is not able to bring back God is able to restore it praise God there is no anointing that you feel like you've lost that God can't restore it he can give you a right mind back he can give you your peace back he can give you your joy back. Come on, somebody. He can give you your faith back. Come on. Glory to God. Glory to God. God is in the business of not just reviving. He's in the business of restoration. He created you to fulfill a position, and that position is still there. Just because you left doesn't mean your position left. Just because you left doesn't mean that the office is not there for you. As soon as you're ready to come back and be revived. God is going to set you right back in the same position, uh, not just in the same state that you left, uh, but he's going to put you in a better state than what you had had before. Praise God. I don't know I'm talking to here tonight, but I feel like somebody uh, needs a little bit of restoration. Praise God. Uh, I'm getting my joy back. Uh, I'm getting my prayer life back. Uh, I'm getting my worship back. I'm getting my faith back. Come on. Uh, I'm getting my hope back. Uh, some of y'all just need to go claiming your family back uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, yeah, we made some mistakes and we might be estranged, uh, but the word of the Lord is to you. God is able to restore. God is able to heal broken hearts. Uh, God is able to mend broken relationships. Uh, God is able to put marriages back together. Uh, God is able to put your family back together. Come on, somebody. Uh, don't give up on God just yet. Uh, I know you can see the palmer worm uh, and the canker worm and all things destroying it uh, and it's robbing you of your faith but I'm here to tell you God uh, is able to give it back to you. Uh, it's time for our faith to rise up in this place today uh, and say God uh, I want you to restore everything uh, that the enemy was able to take from me. I want it all back. I want it all back. I want it all back. It's time to stop allowing even the enemy or our own negativity to convince us that some things are just lost and never to return again. That's a lie from the pit of hell. If Jesus was able to raise himself up from the grave, surely he can bring resurrection into your life. If he was able to bring life into a dead man, surely, praise God, God is able to move on your behalf. Get rid of that enemy and tell him to kick rocks. Don't let him stay in your mind any longer. If Jesus can rise up from the dead, you can walk in newness of life. If Jesus can rise up from the dead, your family's not too far gone. If Jesus can rise up from the dead, he's able to bring some things back. He's able to restore it. I think it's time we will, we trust in God, trust in the power and the will of God, that it takes pleasure for him to Restore you back to where you were. Hallelujah. Once that prodigal son came back, the scripture says in Luke 15, 24, for this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Praise God. There is nothing that is true for God that God, that God can't bring it back. When they start praying, God, bring some things back. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God brings some things back. I think sometimes we give up a little too easily. Thank you, Jesus. Well, that will never happen again. Well, this marriage is impossible. Whew. Hello. It's, it's impossible. We've gone too far. We're too reprobate. We give up on God. God ain't gave up. Thank you, Jesus. I thought hope endureth all. A love endureth all. It's always hopeful. It endures through every circumstance and never gives up, the scripture says, never loses faith. I think we ought to put our faith back in God. And we might not be able to do nothing else but pray about it, but we need to take it to God in prayer. Say, God, you said you would restore. You said you would revive, oh God. You said you would renew. God, I pray that you do it even in our situation. 
Thank you, Jesus. Secondly, God delights in restoration. I want you to look at this story because this, this prodigal son, he had already repented in his mind. He said in verse 21, he said to the father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight. And look at what the son said. And am no more worthy to be called thy son. Whew. Man, what a posture. How many have been in this posture before? I've, <laughs> this is not just messing up. This you know you messed up. Thank you, Jesus. That's what kind of posture this is. I messed up after knowing better. <coughs> you stood in Father's face and said, give me my inheritance. I'm bouncing. Deuces. Couldn't wait to get out of my daddy's house. That was me, literally. I couldn't wait to leave daddy's house. <laughs> now, I wish I could go live back at home and not pay no bills. <laughs> All you want me to do is clean my room and take out the trash? Amen. And I can stay here for free? Pfft, I'm going back to daddy's house. This is, y'all tripping. It's a famine out here. I'm hardly. <laughs> oh, I was so stupid when I was at home. Bow up my chest at my dad. All he wanted me to do was clean my room, and I was too busy for that. Stupid, just. And my dad wasn't playing either. All right, get out then. That was a nice thing he said, praise God. He wasn't saved, so you can imagine. Thank you, Jesus. And I was happy to go. Get out there on my own, being evicted. <laughs> I didn't know what eviction was like until I got out there on my own. Got out there on my own, messed around, didn't pay the electric bill, and they cut the power off. I had never experienced that before in my house because my dad took care of business. Mom and dad took care of business. Got out there on my own. I was like, oh, I have to work, praise God. At home, I could kind of decide whether or not I was going to go to work that day. <laughs> I could go look through the fridge and, they, you know, the stuff would just be there. I didn't ever think about how I got there or what it took to get it there. <laughs> Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Praise God. Lots of, lo lots of benefits. You find yourself upside down in a pig pen. Thank you, Jesus. You come back to your right mind real quick. <laughs> I remember calling my dad to be like, Daddy, you was right. I was, I was tripping. I, was, I don't know what I was thinking. So he repents, and he gets back to his father's house, and, and, and he's had such a humiliating experience that he's willing to admit, admit, I am no longer worthy to be your son. Now, the father didn't tell him this. This is what he thinks in his mind. He understands, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. I, I failed so badly. My expectation of restoration is not into my previous position. My expectation is one lower. I just want to be a servant. I just want to be a servant in the house. Thank you, Jesus. And, and which is a reasonable plea, having experienced sonship and denying it for the world. It's a reasonable plea, having spoiled your inheritance. It's a reasonable plea. But I love how the father answers him, and it's a non-answer. Father didn't even acknowledge his little request. He didn't say, yeah, you're no more worthy. <laughs> Verse 22, the father said to his servants, the position in which he's requesting, he talks to the servant. Ooh, and say, go get the best robe. Put it on him. Bring the ring. Put it on his hand. Bring the shoes and put it on his feet. Ah, thank you, Jesus. I'm not saying you don't need to go through a, a humbling experience. All of us need a humbling experience. All of us need a revelation of who we really are in the eyes of God. All of us need a revelation of how worthy we are not. 
Oh, Jesus, that we don't deserve this great salvation, that we couldn't earn this great salvation, that we couldn't buy this great salvation. All of us need a revelation of the sinners that we really are and how far we have fallen short of the glory of God, that we had a great inheritance but spoiled it through sin and disobedience to the word of God. All of us need that humiliating experience so we can come to God and say, God, I'm no longer worthy, but I'm so thankful. God's response is not to our expectation. God responds and puts us right back in the place uh, where we left in the first place. Hey dog, I don't care if you want to be just a servant. Uh, you're not a servant. Uh, you're a son. I'll say that again until somebody believes it. Uh, you're not just a servant. Uh, you're a son of this house. Uh, which means you got your inheritance back. Glory to God. You got your power back. You got your authority back. You got your position back. Oh, glory to God. You're not a servant. You're not a servant. You are a son in the house. And I'll show you, servant, go and show him that he's still a son. Huh. Oh. He called the servants to clothe him again. He called the servants to put the ring on his finger. He called the servant to put shoes on his feet. He called the servants to go, feel, to go kill the fatted calf and kill it and make a feast. It was the servants that did all this in celebration of the son. The scripture says that the angels are rejoicing over a sinner. Hello, somebody. The angels aren't the son. You're the son. You're the son of this house. Don't you settle for anything less. Don't you let the enemy talk you out of your original position. Even if your heart condemns you, God is greater. God is interested in full restoration. You get your robe back. The scripture says, go get the best robe and put it on him. The robe speaks of righteousness. Revelation 19 verse 8, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. You get your righteousness back. Doesn't matter what kind of sin you were entered in while you were out there in the world. God gives you your righteousness back. Doesn't matter what you did, you get your righteousness back. You are justified before God. You are sanctified before God. You are holy before God. Not because of you uh, but because of what he clothes you with uh, the blood of Jesus Christ applied to your life uh, in the waters of baptism you put on Christ uh, you're clothed in the breastplate uh, of righteousness come on somebody uh, when you come back into restoration uh, God doesn't see your sin anymore uh, God doesn't see your flaws anymore uh, God doesn't see your failure anymore uh, God doesn't see your mistake anymore uh, all he sees is the best robe uh, glory to God uh, the best robe uh, the one without spots uh, the one without blemish uh, clothed in fine white linen which is the righteousness of saints that is reserved not for the servants but reserved for the children of God you get your ring back the ring represents power and it represents authority Haggai chapter 2 verse 23 in the NLT but when this happens says the Lord of heaven's armies I will honor you Zerubbabel son of Shealtiel my servant and will make you like a signet ring on my finger says the Lord for I has chosen you I the Lord of heaven armies have spoken a signet ring is something that they would use to verify the authority of the king anytime the king made a decree he would have a ring and they would stamp it with the wax and his signature would be in the ring it's the same type of ring that Joseph would have received Received, uh, when he was put in power second in command over Egypt uh, that ring represents your power uh, and authority not as a servant uh, but as a son uh, so when you are restored God gives you the power and authority uh, that you lost uh, that same power and authority that was lost to the devil in the garden when he tricked them uh, to biting that fruit God gave you that power back uh, he gave that power here to his disciples uh, he said you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost uh, is come upon you. Uh, power over all the power of the enemy uh, to tread upon serpents and scorpions. Church, uh, we have power. And when God restores you, you get that same power back. Uh, hello, somebody. I think we need a revelation that we got power in this place. Uh, we'll start casting out devils. Thank you, Jesus. Um, we don't have to worry about any witchcraft. We don't got to worry about any voodoo because we got power. We don't have to worry about any curse because we got power. Uh, help us Holy Ghost <laughs> oh thank you Jesus <laughs> amen trying this too you got to recognize you're a child of God you are a child of God 
and that signet ring represents power and authority. That means your words command things. Jesus said, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Your words are able to move things because you got power. He said, whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Your words are like the king has spoken them. I think we need to recognize the type of power that the born again church really has. We don't have to sit wrong cowering, wondering if God is hearing us. When we speak, glory to God, it's like God is speaking into this spiritual realm. When we declare something in prayer, you better believe it comes all the power and the authority. For Jesus said, if you got faith the size of a mustard seed, you can speak to this mountain and say, be thou removed and cast into the sea. And he said, if you do it without doubt, it must happen. Church, when God restores you, you get restoration of power. Power over all the power of the enemy. Power to tread up on serpents and scorpions. Power to cast out devils. Power to lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. Power to live above sin. Power in the name of Jesus. And I'm so glad he didn't leave that servant without putting a ring upon him. Because if you're going to be fully restored, you can't be fully restored unto a weaker position. You've got to have the same power and authority that you lost. God wants to give it back to you. Somebody said, I'm putting my ring on. Metaphorically speaking, praise God, put my ring on, getting my power back. Just because you were lost doesn't mean you don't get that power no more. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Lastly, he said, put shoes on his feet. You could probably guess what this one means. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You get your purpose back. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. You get your purpose back. A lot of people, when they come back to church, they lost their purpose. And that's just as important as the robe and the ring. Because if you got your position and your power, if you don't have no purpose, it's the only matter of time for you backslide again. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I'm talking in the Holy Ghost. Whew, thank you, Jesus. See, he wanted to come back as a servant. No. God's got a greater purpose for you than just a servant. He wants to prepare you to begin to walk in purpose again. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hello, somebody. Feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. It is God's will to fully restore you. And furthermore, he takes pleasure in full restoration. After he got his righteousness back. After he got his robe back, after he got his power back, after he put the shoes on him, he told the sermon, go kill the fatted calf. We can ready to party. <laughs> we can ready to have a celebration. Hallelujah. We're going to shout. We're going to dance. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to work. That's why you can't come to a quiet church. <laughs> Maybe they're quiet because nobody's being restored there. <laughs> Maybe they're quiet because nobody's being revived there. Maybe they're quiet because the loss is still lost. And the bound is still bound. And the dead are still dead. But in this church, you come in here dead, you're going to leave alive. Woo, hallelujah. You come in here bound, you're going to be set free. You come in here in darkness, you're going to leave in marvelous light. <laughs> oh, glory to God. <laughs> That's why we shout. <laughs> That's why we praise. <laughs> That's why we worship, uh, because we were dead, and now we were alive. Uh, we were lost, uh, and now we were fine. Uh, that man said, I was blind, uh, and now I can see. Glory to God. Uh, I was in darkness, uh, but now I was in light. Uh, now I'm in his marvelous light. Uh, and that's an occasion uh, to praise. Uh, that's an occasion uh, to worship. Uh, that's a reason why we shout. Uh, there's no better reason to shout uh, over a sinner that repents. Uh, there's no better reason to shout uh, than over somebody being restored. Stored. There's no better reason to shout than over people getting baptized, people getting the Holy Ghost, people coming back to their right mind. There's no better reason to shout than people putting a crack pipe down and coming out of prostitution, coming out of drug addiction, coming out of darkness. There's no better reason to shout because that's a soul that is saved. That's another one that is in the heavenly book that Jesus has. That's why we shout. That's why we praise. We show forth the praises of him that's called us out of darkness into marvelous light. So why don't we kill the fatted calf? Why don't we have a celebration? Why don't we shout? For God has redeemed us. Hallelujah. 
Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Kill the fatty calf. up. Let's throw a celebration up. Hallelujah, Jesus. Ah, uh, glory. There's another son that's back. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Ooh, praise God. Now, full restoration. That's what it looks like. The story's not over. Because the last point is we got to stay away from that elder brother spirit. Because <laughs> the father decides he's going to throw a celebration. He said, because my, my son was, was lost and now he's found. He was dead and now he's alive. Amen. And so the Bible says in the next verse, 25, now his elder son, it's always the older one, was in the field. And as he came and drew nigh into the house, he heard music and dancing. It's kind of ironic because why are you not in the house? Hello, somebody. Well, he heard the music. He heard the dancing. Verse 26, and he called one of the servants. He said, what's all that noise about? What these things meant. And he said, the servant said unto him, thy brother is come. And thy father hath killed the fatty calf because he received him safe and sound. And you would think the brother would be like, whoo, yeah. I didn't know. Why ain't y'all come and tell me? I could have joined the, come, come join the party with you. I like steak. <laughs> Good old burger. Hey, Amen. God, I mean, I mean, God was cooking burgers here. That's, that's in the Bible, y'all. I got proof now. <laughs> Fatted calf. That's what burger is. Fatted calf. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You ain't going to leave me out of that party. Not if you love your brother. Right. <clears throat> now, if you don't, don't love your brother, this is your response. Verse 28. And he was angry. And would not go in. Therefore, his father had to come out and entreat him. Verse 29, he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgress I at any time thy commandments. And yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. <laughs> You're laughing. We do this all the time. We do it all the time. Look at how pastor treating them. He broke his back for them. He brought up the whole calf for them. I've been here all the time. He did that for me. I'm here every Monday and Wednesday at 5 a.m. prayer. I'm here every week cleaning the church. He didn't do that for me. As soon as X, Y, Z, Joe Blow, favorite saint of God come through. Uh-huh, look at you quiet now. <sighs> Did you say you can hear a rat like a nice? Quiet now. He didn't do that for me. And he said he had the nerve to tell his father, I had never transgressed any of his commandments. Look like to me you're transgressing the best, the, the most important one. Love thy neighbor. He transgressing right now. Oblivious that he's a sinner. Notice the posture. The one that came back and said, I'm not even worried to be a son. Father's like, I ain't even worried about it. Go and dress him up like a son. We're going to have a party. This one out there thinks he just, the best thing since sliced bread. I don't mess. I don't never mess up. I don't never sin. I've been here the whole time. You never did anything for me. And I might make merry with my friends. Verse 30. But look at this. But as soon as this, thy son, not my brother, as soon as your son. <laughs> when people talk like that. You better get your boy. <laughs> we already know love has left the building as soon as that statement comes out. And I would lie to you if I said I haven't said that before. Got to check ourselves. Got to check ourselves. As soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured all thy living with, the, with harlots. Notice now, the father has already forgotten all of that sin. But the brother want to try to bring it up and, as occasion. Mm. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. 
Jesus, help us. As soon as he come, and he, he devoured all his living with harlots, he'd been sinning. He'd been out there doing things which are detestable. Doesn't matter that God has forgiven him. Doesn't matter the Father's forgiven him. This elder brother spirit wants to heap that sin right back on him. We, he can't accept that his brother's gotten forgiveness. Thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And I, I kind of love the, the father's response and answer because he doesn't give him a rebuke like many of us would probably. He rebukes him, but it's, 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 it's more of like a revelational rebuke. He said unto him, verse 31, son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. See, the elder brother was too consumed with hatred to understand he could go in and get a calf anytime he wanted. He said, all that I have is yours. Fatted calf, <laughs> pick which one you want. You have a choice. You can love your brother and rejoice with us or you can be mad and stay on the outside of the house. <laughs> You can have a party anytime you want a party. We'll celebrate you anytime you want. All that I have is yours. He's the elder, and you know they get a double portion, which shows us that if we keep an elder brother spirit, we will be cut off from walking in the blessing and inheritance that God has for us. Because we're too consumed upon the unfairness that we perceive of our younger brother. He could have came in here and worshiped with him. He could have killed another calf. He said, I went and got another one. I figured I'd help party. Praise God. We're going to have black and blue burgers too. Thank you, Jesus. That's not what he did. He was angry and brought occasion against, against his father on behalf of his brother. The elder brother spirit will keep you from your own restoration. Hello. Galatians 6 verse 1, brethren, if any man be overtaken in a fault, look at this, you which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness. If you think you're so spiritual, then you ought to be able to restore your brother in the spirit of meekness. What good is all this prayer we're doing if we can't restore our brothers in the spirit of meekness? What good is all this worship if we can't restore our brothers in the spirit of meekness? Considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Meaning that the same sin that they were struggling in is about to come up over you. Kind of sounds like a repeat of Cain and Abel, huh? If you do right, you'll be accepted. But if not, sin lieth at the door. And to thee shall be his desire. Oh, help us, Holy Ghost. Verse number two says, bear ye one another's burdens. And so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. This elder brother thought he was something. He thought I'd never sin with you. I've been with you this whole time. He was deceived into thinking he was something when he was really nothing. The scripture says in verse 4, but let every man prove his own work. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. Saints, God wants to restore us. There are positions in him. Places of ministry in him. Prophetic voices in God. Giftings and talents that God has released. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. There are regions that God has locked up in some of your ministries. Whole families are locked up inside of you. But it's time for God to restore us. To bring you back to that place of power. To bring you back to that place of authority. 
to bring you back to that position where you're clothed in righteousness again. You've got your purpose back. You've got your power back. You've got your authority back. Praise God. We've got our praise back. We've got our worship back. We've got our position close to the Father back. We're made to sit together in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. We've been restored back to our original position in the garden, closer, walking with God in the cool of the day where we can talk to him and, and he can talk to us. But we've got to stay away from the elder brother spirit because you're not the only one God wants to restore. You're not the only one God wants to heal. You're not the only one God wants to set free. God wants to bring in many more sons and daughters. He's got a whole flock out there. He's got a whole people out there. People that are heirs of salvation. People that are in darkness right now, but God's going to bring them out. And we've been praying for them. People that are in drug abuse right now, but God is going to bring them out. And we've been praying for them. And when they come in, and when God gives them their restoration, we've got to be willing to shout with them. We've got to be willing to dance with them. We've got to be willing to rejoice with them huh? in remembrance of our own restoration. Huh? We can't be on the outside of the house when the party's going on inside of the house. Huh? We can't be all mad up in the field huh? when God is throwing a celebration in the house. Huh? I don't know about you, but I think we need a revelation huh? that all of us were lost and needed to be found. Huh? That all of us were blind and needed our sight. Huh? That all of us were sinners and needed grace. Huh? That all of us had fallen short huh? of the glory of God and say, God, huh? we've even fallen short even right now uh, restore us lord god uh, help us to fulfill our position uh, help us to walk in our purpose uh, help us to walk in the anointing uh, that you have ordained for us uh, to accomplish lord god uh, upon this earth uh, if that's your prayer here tonight uh, you ought to stand to your feet uh, and begin to shout and praise god uh, for the restoration that he's brought into your life uh, praise him for the restoration he'll bring into your family uh, praise him for the restoration he's bringing to this community uh, praise him for the house being full uh, of lost sons the house being full uh, of lost daughters uh, and begin to claim even more in the name of Jesus. Restoration. It's time for us to be restored. Time for us to be restored. Like I said earlier, you can't be restored until you're revived. In order to be revived, you got to be baptized in the precious name of Jesus Christ of the remission of sins. Peter said, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. What that does is that puts you into Christ. You come back full of sin. It's the baptism that washes that sin away. Removes it off of your record. And then God is not content with just giving you a new vessel. He wants to fill the vessel. The scripture says you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. He said it's a promise unto you and to your children. And to all that are far off. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. That's the first step to restoration. You've got to be revived. You've got to get the new life in you. And if you've already been through that, you can go to a, through a position, like I said last week, where you kind of get away from that fire. You get away from that, from, that, from that initial fire that God put inside and you become lukewarm. It's time to get back to that church. It's time to say, you know what, I've had enough of this world. Come on. I've had enough of this world. I've had enough of this pig pen. I've had enough of the depression. I've had enough of the anxiety. I've had enough. I've had enough. I'm ready to get back. I want my purpose back. Hello, I want my anointing back. I want my righteousness back. I want my position back. I want my sonship back. If that's you, I want you to come to these altars tonight. And we're going to pray and ask God to move in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Every hand lifted, every eye closed. We're getting ready to pray. Amen. As we're praying, we're free to make it way to these altars. We're going to pray for restoration. We're going to pray for restoration. I believe it's the will of God for churches to be planted out of this church. <laughs> that means sons have to be restored. Daughters, you got to be restored. I believe it's the will of God for us to take every stronghold in South Tampa and bring it down by the power of Jesus. That means soldiers need to be restored. There are positions on the battlefield that you got to take up again. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. I need to put your hand back to the plow. 
Oh God, I need restoration. Oh God, there are prophetic positions that are needed in this season where God wants to show us and give us direction and give us understanding. People need to get back. The watchman has got to get back on the wall. Oh, glory to God. Come on, let's pray. Father, we love you tonight. We thank you, Lord, for mercy. We thank you, Lord, for your kindness. We thank you, Lord, that you've called us out of darkness, oh God, and into your marvelous light into your kingdom for such a time as this, Lord. And all of us, God, at some point we've been a prodigal, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, we've wasted our inheritance, Lord God. We've wasted time, Lord. We've wasted energy, Lord. We've wasted money, Lord God. We've wasted, Lord God, what you poured into us. Wasted, the Lord God, on things of this world. But Father, I pray today that you would forgive us, Lord God. We're coming back, Lord God, asking for full restoration, Lord. Give us of that sin tonight, Lord God, and cleanse us, Lord, for all unrighteousness, Lord. But I pray tonight, Lord God, that you would begin to robe us again with righteousness, Lord God. Close us again, Lord God, with the blood of Jesus, Lord. Wash us over again, Lord God. Though our sins are scarlet, Lord, wash them white as snow, O God, in you, Jesus. O God, and I pray that you would restore the power of God and the authority, Lord God, that you have ordained for us to walk in, O God. Help us, Lord God, to walk in that power again, Lord. Lord, to walk in that authority, Lord, again, oh God, to realize and understand the position you have placed us in, Lord God. Oh God, put the enemy under our feet, Lord God. Oh God, and give us power over everything that to hold us bound, Lord God. Give us power over all the power and principality over the enemy, Lord Jesus, oh God. Oh God, to take territory, Lord Jesus, oh God, and to go forth and execute your will, Father. I pray here tonight, Lord God, that you would restore purpose, Lord God. Oh Lord, Lord, restore purpose in the hearts and minds uh, of every saint of God, Lord Jesus. Uh, for you talk to us, Lord God. Uh, you've given us dream, Lord God. You've given us vision, Lord. Uh, you've given us your will, Lord God. You've laid out the commission, Lord God. Uh, restore our purpose, Lord God, uh, in fulfillment right here, oh God. Uh, oh Lord Jesus, oh God. Uh, for you said, Lord God, uh, oh God, uh, that all things work together for good uh, to them who are called, oh God. Uh, According to your purpose, Lord, help us to be about your business, Lord God, to be steadfast, Lord God, unmovable, Lord, is abounding in the work of the Lord, for we know that our labor is not in vain, Lord God, help us to be effective again, Lord God, effective in the kingdom, Lord, effective, Lord God, in ministry, Lord God, effective, Lord God, in these last days, restore purpose, Lord God, back upon families, Lord, back upon marriages, oh God, back in the hearts and minds of your people, Lord, so that we can go forth and do your will that you have designed, Lord Jesus. God, I pray here tonight, Lord God, I shall, oh God, that the angels will begin to rejoice, Lord God, and you would grant us full restoration, Lord God, restoration back to our position, Lord God, back to a place of faith, Lord, back to a place of favor, Lord God, I pray that you would restore everything that was lost, Lord God, everything, Lord God, that we lost along the way, any hindrance, Lord God, I pray that you move it out of the way, anything that you have sent, Lord God, over us, Lord God, I pray that you would begin to restore her. I pray that you would begin to renew our mind, Lord God. Uh, renew our heart, oh God. Uh, renew, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Uh, oh God, renew our faith, Lord God. Uh, restore the joy, Lord God. Uh, restore peace, Lord God. Uh, I pray even for backsiders right now, God. Uh, those who have known this truth, Lord, uh, and have left for various reasons, Lord. Uh, I pray that you would bring them back, oh God. Uh, family members, Lord, that have backslidden, uh, bring them back, oh God. Uh, friends that have backslidden, Lord, uh, bring them back, oh God. God, uh, oh God, bring them back into your good graces, Lord. Uh, fall upon them again, Lord. Uh, clothe them again, Lord God. Uh, fill them again, Lord God. Uh, oh God, anoint them again, Lord Jesus, oh God. Uh, wash them, oh God, over again, Lord. Uh, bring them back into the house, Lord. Uh, let us receive them, Lord God, with open arms, Lord God. Uh, with a rejoicing spirit, Lord God. Uh, with love, Lord God, uh, for our brother, oh God. Uh, keep us, Lord God, uh, from being lifted up in pride, Lord. Uh, keep us, oh God, uh, from being lifted up in vanity, oh God, uh, from thinking more of ourselves uh, than we really are, Lord God. Uh, but I pray today, Lord God, uh, that you would help us to restore one another, Lord, uh, in the spirit of meekness, oh God. Uh, I pray today that you would help us, Lord God, uh, to go forth in unity, Lord God, uh, with every brother and sister in Christ, Lord God, uh, that your will can be done. Uh, help us to do good to them uh, that are of the household of faith, Lord God. Uh, oh God, uh, help us to love one another, Lord God, uh, as you have loved us, Lord God. Uh, help us to love our neighbors. 
helpers, Lord God, uh, even like ourselves, Lord. Uh, let your will be done in our hearts, Lord. Uh, let your will be done in our minds, Lord God. Uh, fill us up to overflowing tonight, Lord God. Uh, let your will be done in this place, Lord. Uh, we'll be careful to give you the glory, Lord, uh, to give you the honor, Lord, uh, and to give you the praise. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Uh, come on, why don't you link up with somebody uh, and begin to pray a prayer of restoration uh, right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, come on, get beside somebody uh, and begin to